Right now, the U.S. is temporarily shutting down its embassy in Belarus and as the Russian military assault on Ukraine expands in Russia, non-emergency U.S. embassy staff and families of diplomats are in Moscow. They're also being authorized to leave due to security and safety issues related to the Russian invasion this morning. Ukraine is requesting an immediate ceasefire amid peace talks between the two nations. ABC's Faith Abube has the latest. Ukrainian and Russian delegates seen arriving at the Belarus border with Ukraine this morning for their first direct talks since Russian troops invaded Ukraine. Russia signaling it wants Ukraine to adopt a neutral status in order to resolve the crisis. But Ukrainian President Zelensky doubtful of a diplomatic breakthrough in a video to his people telling the Russian soldiers to save their lives and go away. Overnight, more shelling in Ukraine, including the capital city of Kyiv. The Ukrainian army mounting a fierce defense against Russia's more advanced and larger military force. Even Ukrainian citizens taking up arms to defend their nation. It's patriotic. This people is patriotic. Russia's defense ministry admitting its forces have suffered losses. I think what's most noticeable here is that the Russian military seems incompetent. Uh, it's shocking how bad they are. Fears the slowdown could lead Russian President Vladimir Putin to take more desperate measures. Over the weekend, the Russian leader putting his nuclear deterrent forces on high alert for the first time in nearly 50 years, claiming NATO countries were making aggressive statements against Russia. The U.S. leaving its nuclear alert level unchanged. This is really a pattern that we've seen from President Putin through the course of this conflict, which is uh, manufacturing threats that don't exist in order to justify further aggression. Meanwhile, Russia and its people already feeling the economic pain of punishing international sanctions. Its currency, the ruble, tumbling against the U.S. dollar. The Russian stock market reportedly closed for the day. And amid the international backlash against Russia, the International Olympic Committee is now recommending that international sports federations and organizers not invite or allow Russian and Belarusian athletes to participate in competitions. In Washington, Faith Abube, ABC News. The U.S. and other nations have imposed economic sanctions against Russia. Now states like Texas are taking action, too. This weekend, Governor Greg Abbott, he asked companies to pull Russian products from Texas store shelves. Now, the response was fast. Texas bars and liquor stores took Russian vodka off their menus and shelves. This is truly an attempt to show solidarity with Ukraine and with Russians who are bravely opposing Putin's actions. Now, we did get a chance to speak to the CEO of the Texas Restaurant Association. We're going to lock arms and help the restaurants and the businesses, but also make sure that the citizens of Ukraine know that Texas restaurants and food service industry is with them. Um, it's, it, it's not a lot. We know that. Uh, but I think people right now feel very implored to do whatever they can. And it's not just Texas and California do not buy signs were placed on Russian imported liquor and the governor of New Hampshire signed an executive order to remove all Russian spirits from store shelves, hoping that states will follow their lead. Now, keep in mind here, this move is mostly symbolic because the stock they're removing has already been paid for and many top selling vodka brands are not actually made in Russia. Most are made in Sweden, France and right here in the USA.